flick shots, snaps, switches, target acquisitions, and so on, all follow the same principle of quickly moving your crosshair from one place to another. But how exactly do you do that? And better yet, how is it done accurately? First off, let's look at a few reasons as to why flick shots are so useful so we can better understand why they're worth learning in the first place. Then I'll cover exactly how they're done from in-game settings to the hand and mouse movements needed. The first and simplest reason is to reduce downtime and improve our time to kill. Every moment we delay before firing at an enemy is time we aren't doing damage to them and time that they could be doing damage to us. This is relevant for all weapons, even automatic weapons that rely on tracking. You still want to have your crosshair on target as soon as possible to improve your kill speed. Generally, we can consider this as target acquisition. We see a target outside of our crosshair and acquire them. To do so, we place our crosshair over them with a quick flick. Next, a flick shot allows us to mitigate the impact enemy movement and evasiveness has on our accuracy. You can think of a flick shot as an ability to pause the game and then move your crosshair onto the target before resuming the game. This is made possible by the speed of a flick. Between the time a flick is initiated and finished, even if they are in motion, the target likely hasn't moved at all or has only managed to move a tiny amount in that time frame. So even if they're sprinting, jumping, strafing, or otherwise being evasive, it doesn't really matter where they'll be in the near future because we can move our crosshair onto them right now. To quickly summarize their usefulness, flick shots allow us to start doing damage as quickly as possible, effectively improving our time to kill. And they allow us to hit evasive targets that would otherwise be extremely difficult to follow. Now that we know why they're used, how are they actually performed? First, we need to consider our settings. Flicking with high input latency gives that enemy more time to move before the flick shot lands, which we do not want. I don't want to go too far off track here, so I'll rapid fire the main points. Ensure your monitor is running at its highest refresh rate. In game, set your refresh rate to the highest available. Play on full screen or full screen exclusive if available. Disable VSync and lower your graphic settings to improve your frame rate. Anti-aliasing and shadows are sometimes exceptions to this. If available, turn NVIDIA Reflex on and to on and boost if you have a decent computer. Next, let's cover mouse sensitivity. If your sense is very fast, a typical flick shot won't really be possible. You can still move your crosshair from one place to another quickly, but shorter distances in particular aren't as feasible and instead a tracking and clicking or wait and clicking style is generally more suitable. For the purposes of learning to flick, I would recommend playing on a sensitivity somewhere between 25 and 50 centimeters per 360. To find yours, I have linked to an online calculator below that you can use. This doesn't mean you have to play in that range forever, it will simply make flicking feel more natural and useful, and the cues in this video will make more sense. Now, onto the flick shots themselves. They come in two different forms. Rebounds that look like this, where you flick to the target, click at the apex of the movement, and then bounce back a distance, and dead stops that look like this, where you flick to the target, click at the apex of the movement, and hold the crosshair there. Rebounding tends to be more forgiving in regards to accuracy, at least at the beginner and intermediate levels. Considering how quickly flicks are executed, clicking at the right time can be a challenge. The rebound movement works similarly to tossing a ball into the air. When the ball reaches the apex, it hangs in place for a moment and this is when we click. Our rebounded flick shots work much the same way. Our hand and mouse reach the intended apex of our flick, and in the time between bouncing back in the other direction, the mouse hangs in that same area for a few moments that provides a decent window for us to click within. This makes it harder to mistime the click on a rebounded flick. And considering the speed of a flick, clicking too early or too late can cause us to miss the intended mark quite dramatically. Rebounding also helps to clear up our vision and better understand the position of our enemy in between shots. This is done by getting our gun model, crosshair, muzzle flash, smoke and so on away from the target. You certainly don't want to go overboard with rebounding though. Cross screen flicks may look great, but they're much harder to land. Typically, the further you have to move your crosshair, the harder a shot is to hit, so try to keep rebounds relatively close. Dead stop flicks are used for target acquisition. For example, with an automatic weapon, it wouldn't make much sense to flick onto someone, then rebound back off. 
They're also used for more advanced flick shots with semi-automatic weapons. As the name would suggest, a dead stop flick has your crosshair stop at the apex of the movement. For flick shots, they can be useful for advanced aimers because of how still you can keep your screen in between shots. A still screen means you can better judge the distance between your crosshair and the target, and better read their movement. Dead stops tend to be more difficult to execute for flick shots because of how hard it is to precisely stop such a fast movement. And this leads us into how to physically perform a flick shot. First, hold out your arm just above your mouse pad with nothing in your hand. Quickly move your hand a short distance. At the apex of the action, you should feel a sort of whiplash as you fight the inertia of the movement. Rebounding is an easy way to deal with this. You can choose where the apex of the movement is and deal with the inertia by rebounding back the other way, giving it more time to dissipate without throwing off your intended stopping point. Next, open up paint and hold your mouse as if you were aiming. You may need to lower your mouse DPI to do this without your crosshair moving straight to the edge of the screen. Starting with rebound flicks, quickly move your mouse to one side, clicking at the apex of your movement, keeping mouse one held down and rebound back. Normally, you just click, but to help us visualize what's going on, it's handy to hold it down so we can see the path. And to make things easier, try to rebound to a point close to your starting position. You don't necessarily need to do this in game, but it makes things easier to handle for now. When well executed, there should only be a small hook at the end. The start of the line representing when we clicked and where the shot will land. If you have a very large hook, that shows you are clicking too early in the movement. The shots were fired here, but were intended to be fired somewhere closer to here. If you consistently have no hook at all, then you were likely firing too late in the movement. Let's see what this looks like in game. Please keep in mind that some of the following clips are a fairly dramatic use of flicking and were the result of purposefully placing my crosshair further away just to have some fun and test myself. With this flick, my crosshair stops right on their head. I don't have the exact frame to show it, but if we draw a line down, we can see where it lines up. And the next frame shows the shot firing right at the apex of the flick before rebounding. In paint, this flick would have little to no hook. In this example, I aim my shot slightly ahead to account for the bullet's travel time and fire. But you can see my crosshair drifts a bit further to the right before rebounding. While you can still correctly time and hit your shots with more of a hook, it is less consistent. Every moment during a flick, your crosshair moves a large distance, so even the tiniest error in timing can have your shot landing well outside your intended target. Firing at the apex is far more forgiving, as we have a wider window of time to fire the shot before the crosshair has moved away. Think back to the ball example. In paint, this shot would have a moderately sized hook. This example shows what a dead stop target acquisition looks like. This enemy surprises me, so I flick over to them without any extra rebound and start firing, which lets me start doing damage as soon as possible, netting me the kill even though I was at a significant disadvantage. And here is an example of dead stop flicks with a revolver style weapon. You can see the flick itself stops right on the head with no rebound. The only crosshair movement is coming from my own physical movement while strafing and the recoil of the gun. This helps to keep my screen as still as possible, allowing me to best judge the distance between my crosshair and the target to land these tricky headshots. So, now we know the physical hand and mouse movements needed to make a flick happen, and when we should be clicking. Next, I'll cover some more generalized advice as to how to best execute flick shots and to improve as quickly as possible. First, remember to be deliberate. Each flick shot needs to have a purpose and intention behind it. If you are just wildly flicking while on autopilot, you won't be consistent. Give each shot some amount of thought. What are you aiming at? The head? The chest? Choose a specific target. Next, be calculated. You don't need to fire your weapons at their absolute maximum fire rates. Taking just a moment to read their movement and line up the shot is often more worthwhile. This can also help to avoid clicking before your weapon is actually ready to fire, which is a common mistake that happens if you panic. Some games will buffer the input, so the weapon will still fire, but after you intended, throwing off your shot. Next, I'll break the flick down into its components. First, acknowledge your crosshair position and the position of your enemy. Secondly, flick your crosshair over to them. And thirdly, click at the apex of your mouse movement. 
it can help to break it down into its steps. The speed of a flick is important. Too slow and the enemy moves away before you click. Too fast and you risk mistiming your shot or missing the flick entirely due to using too much tension to generate that speed. Knowing what the extremes look and feel like can help you hone in on a solid middle ground. And finally, record your gameplay. Nvidia Shadowplay's Instant Replay and OBS Replay Buffer are two accessible and handy options for recording short clips. These features allow you to press a button to record the previous one minute or so of gameplay, the duration is up to you, which saves on hard drive space and saves you the trouble of trawling through footage for the right moments. There's probably better options out there now, but I use Pot Player most of the time to check footage back frame by frame, or DJV if I need very detailed frame data. This can be useful for seeing exactly what is causing flick shots to miss, like clicking at the wrong time, over aiming, under aiming, etc. And finally, flick responsibly. Not every shot needs to be flicked. It's hard to say exactly when you should and shouldn't do them as it comes down to so many different variables, so I'll summarize it with this instead. One of the most important keys to having great aim is to not aim so much. Trying to keep your screen as still as possible is an excellent way to make this happen. Be aware of the movement constraints of the game you are playing and acknowledge that enemies aren't just going to zip all over the place, so neither should your crosshair. Focus on having neat, fast and calculated crosshair movements. Hopefully you found all that information helpful, it's a lot to take in, but I wanted to cover all the essentials in one video. You can check out the Clawmate mouse mod I designed over at StruthGamingGear.com. Thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.